Well, thank you so much. It's a great pleasure to be here to tell you about our work in collaboration with Lisa Cousins on uh, in immune cells as targets for therapy in pancreatic cancer. And particularly what I'd like to talk to you about is the therapeutic potential of Bruton's tyrosine kinase and PI3 kinase gamma inhibitors in pancreatic cancer. So I need to let you know that both Lisa and I have interactions and research support with a variety of companies that are developing these antagonists for uh, pancreatic cancer and other cancer types. And I will tell you about the off-label or investigational use of several of these. And Lisa and I both have some roles in the advisory boards of companies that are developing some of these agents. So this is a slide uh, that Lisa uses to, again, indicate that uh, several of the hallmarks of cancer that were recently reviewed by Doug Hanahan and Bob Weinberg are playing a role in every type of tumor. And in particular, we are focused on the immune infiltrating cells that are involved in suppressing immunity and directly stimulating tumor growth and angiogenesis. So, so this is a slide that Lisa prepared that I wanted to show you because it shows the dramatic effect of inflammation in cancer. So in almost every type of normal tissue, there are relatively few CD45 positive hematopoietic cells. In almost every type of tumor, from lung to pancreas to prostate, you will see a dramatic increase in the number of CD45 positive cells within the tumor tissue. And so it is clear that uh, we need to understand the roles of these cells as a response to the tumor, and we need to understand how to harness these cells in order to improve our tumor therapy. So the big question that arises, are all tumor types the same in their ability to recruit and uh, um, suppress tumor, uh, uh, suppress in a, a response to the tumor? Or are there tissue-specific or tumor-specific responses that we need to understand in order to develop therapy? So uh, Lisa has actually a long history in this, in this field, and uh, this is her slide that summarizes some of the interesting and um, tissue-specific immune controls that have been observed, that she has observed. So in tumors, generally you observe a Th2-type pro-angiogenic, pro-fibrotic immune-suppressive phenotype. Uh, this is uh, attributed to primarily myeloid cells and other cells that collaborate to suppress uh, the T cell mediated immunity, as seen on the right. So, CD8 positive T cells generally can affect an anti tumor response, and yet, as you've heard already today, these cells are not active in most tumor types without some sort of boost from therapy. So, Lisa has shown in a variety of publications that there are distinctions between types of tumors. So in mammary carcinoma, for example, uh, she's observed that CD4 positive T cells uh, actually activate macrophages and then those macrophages suppress dendritic cells, antigen presentation, and CD8 positive T cell function. In squamous cell carcinoma, she's observed a different effect, that B cells are responsible for activating macrophages and inhibiting CD8 T cells. And in non-small cell adenocarcinoma, she's seen that Tregs can, can inhibit CD8 positive T cells. Now, these may be specific effects in tumors, or these may be what the particular models have led us to find. But in general, one common uh, player in all of these is the immunosuppressive macrophage, which is what my lab focuses on. So in Lisa's recent publications, she found in squamous cell carcinoma models that B cells secreting immunoglobulins could actually stimulate the immunosuppressive macrophage uh, through FC receptors on the surface of macrophages. What she found was that immunoglobulins uh, make complexes with complement proteins that then can cross-link the FC receptors on the surface of the macrophages, which lead these macrophages to become immunosuppressive. 
And on the right, you can see a model of a B cell and the B cell receptor and the signaling pathways that are involved in B cell activation uh, at the top. And on the bottom, you see the macrophage with the FC receptor on the surface and the, B, B, uh, the signaling pathways that can be involved in FC receptor signaling. One of the molecules you notice that's in common between the two of these is a signaling protein called Bruton's tyrosine kinase, or BTK. And so Lisa was interested in studying BTK in the B cell, and at the same time, my lab was studying BTK in the myeloid cell. And so we decided to put our heads together and determine how BTK is regulating this entire immune response in a pancreatic carcinoma. So in Lisa's studies, anti-CD20 antibodies could block uh, this process, and sick inhibitors also could block this process in this squamous cell carcinoma model. Uh, so uh, in uh, head and neck squamous cell carcinoma and skin tumors, Lisa found that she could identify an increase in CD20 expression in tumors. CD20 is a molecule that's commonly expressed on B cells. And she also found uh, immunoglobulin presence within tumor tissues. So then she turned her attention to pancreas and found that she could identify CD20 mRNA and immunoglobulin mRNA in pancreatic adenocarcinoma tissues, leading her to investigate the role of B cells in pancreatic adenocarcinoma. As you've heard and you know, uh, that pancreatic cancer is a deadly disease with a rapid progression from the time it's discovered. And so um, uh, she and I have been using some of the same models that uh, Dr. Beatty just described to explore the role of inflammation over time in, in um, pancreatic cancer. So in human adenocarcinoma uh, of the pancreas, Lisa undertook an extensive study with a variety of collaborators uh, including uh, uh, Genentech, and found, in fact, that it, within the tumors, uh, there was a significant increase in the number of B cells and even T cells. Uh, on the left, if you can see in the red boxes, that that is uh, indica indicative of the presence of CDA-positive T cells, and the blue is indicative of the number of CD4-positive T cells. So related to the discussion we just had, there really is a significant uh, increase in CD8 and CD4-positive T cells present within these uh, tumor tissues, yet there is no effective immune response. Uh, there's also a large increase in the number of myeloid cells and macrophages. And you can see on the right in the immunohistochemistry that there are very few immune cells and normal tissues, but there is an increase in CD8 cells, uh, CD3 positive T cells, and in uh, um, CSFR1 positive myeloid cells and CD20 positive B cells within these tissues. So Lisa has been asking, do B cell regulated pathways control CD8 positive T cell function and pancreatic cancer development? Now, my lab has been, at the same time, focusing on the role of myeloid cells in cancer. And you can see that in these, uh, at the top, mouse models of pancreatic cancer, that there is, uh, in normal tissues, there are relatively few myeloid cells or macrophages present. In orthotopic tumors, the number of macrophages increases dramatically. And in these spontaneous models of pancreatic cancer that were previously described, you also see a dramatic increase in macrophages. This occurs over time, uh, as you can see on the right. And then in humans, you see a dramatic increase in the number of CD8-positive macrophages in human tissues. On the lower left, you can see that in normal tissues, there are very few macrophages, but in invasive carcinomas, the number of macrophages is very strong. And on the right, uh, TCGA analyses were performed uh, by uh, Kurahara et al. and published in the Journal of Surgical Research that shows an association between the number of macrophages and the outcome of the disease. So our lab has been asking, do myeloid cell-regulated pathways control CD8-positive T cells and pancreatic cancer development? 
So using these mouse models uh, uh, that were developed in Doug Hanahan's lab at the UCSF, uh, we've been uh, using them both as spontaneous models and as uh, orthotopic plant implantations. And Lisa found uh, a dramatic effect of inhibiting B cell function in pancreatic cancer. And this model she used uh, compared the growth of orthotopic pancreatic tumors in normal mice and in mice that were lacking uh, antibody uh, secretion. And you can see here in normal mice, there's a gradual increase in the size of tumors. And in the JH knockout mice, which don't effectively secrete immunoglobulin, you see a suppression in tumor growth. You also see a suppression in the desmoplastic or fibrotic response on the right in these JH knockout mice. So these data suggest that B cells are playing a role in pancreatic cancer. So Lisa also had established a role for FC receptors in uh, head and neck cancers. And so she found, in fact, that FC receptor gamma is playing an important role in pancreatic cancer as well. So in FC receptor gamma knockout mice, again, the tumors grow more slowly and the desmoplastic response is inhibited. So uh, in, when she isolated macrophages from these uh, tumors and dendritic cells, she found, in fact, that these um, myeloid cells show a change in their phenotype. So compared to normal, the, the expression of immunosuppressive factors is strongly reduced. Uh, these include arginase and other uh, factors. And the expression of immunostimulatory or M1 type factors, including IL-12 and others, is strongly uh, stimulated. This suggests a change in phenotype or a reprogramming of the macrophage by inhibiting FC receptor gamma. So our, uh, the B cell receptor and the FC receptor pathways good targets. Uh, again, we turn to our model of B cells and myeloid cell uh, signaling, and you can see the central role that BTK is playing in these signaling pathways. So there are a lot of uh, inhibitors that are being tested in cancer or uh, of immunological cancer, hematopo hematopological cancers or solid tumors uh, that are targeting the B cell function, including anti-CD20, rituximab, um, idealisib, the PI3 kinase delta inhibitor that, that targets uh, the PI3 kinase isoform found in B cells. But in myeloid cells, other antibodies and, and inhibitors are being tested, including anti-CSF1 and CSF1 receptor antibodies. And uh, in my lab, we've been studying PI3 kinase gamma and its role in cancers of different types, including pancreatic cancer. And I'll tell you about uh, the effect of inhibitors of this molecule, including a new investigational drug about to go into the clinic called IPI549 and TG100-115. So uh, both of these uh, pathways can be targeted by BTK and by uh, cell type specific inhibitors. And so uh, we've taken these approaches to, piece, to try to tease out the role of B cells and myeloid cells in this cancer. So first, we'll, I'll tell you about BTK inhibitors and their effect in both of these cell types. So Lisa's lab did uh, immunostaining of human tumors uh, on the left in order to identify which cells in human tumors, pancreatic tumors, are expressing BTK. And you can see that um, CD45 positive cells are definitely expressing BTK and that it is expressed both by CD20 positive B cells and uh, CD11B positive CSF receptor 1 macrophages. In our lab, we uh, isolated cells from tumors and did uh, uh, Western blotting and compared uh, the expression in B cells, macrophages, and in tumor cells that we use in mice. And you can see that BTK is expressed most strongly in B cells, strongly in macrophages, and not at all in tumor cells. In vivo, in mice, Lisa did flow cytometry analyses that show that um, BTK is expressed in myeloid cells and in B cells. 
So BTK inhibitors being developed include uh, four different compounds, ibrutinib, which has already been approved for uh, hematological cancers, uh, and ACP196, which is currently in a variety of clinical trials for leukemia and lymphoma. So um, ibrutinib is a, uh, a BTK inhibitor that has some cross-reactivity with another molecule found in T cells, ITK, and some other, uh, inhibit, some other BTK-like molecules that are found in macrophages, while ACP196 is more or less selective for BTK. So when we, together with Lisa, uh, tested ACP196 in mouse models of pancreatic cancer, in combination with gemcitabine, uh, we found that ACP196 strongly suppressed tumor growth and, uh, the, and actually combined quite well with gemcitabine in nearly eradicating tumors. So uh, ACP196 uh, was uh, effective in suppressing the number of macrophages and monocytes in tumors and also in reducing the number of Tregs and increasing the number of CDA-positive T cells in these tumors. Um, we also were able, in our lab, to re reproduce these studies using PCI-32765 ibrutinib. And then in Lisa's lab, she performed late treatment studies to try to replicate the human clinical situation. In this case, she, they implanted tumors and waited until the tumors were quite large and then began to treat and found that uh, as a single therapy PCI did not have any effect on tumor growth, but in combination with gemcitabine, they saw a significant benefit. So uh, Lisa uh, undertook to determine whether this effect of this inhibitor required the presence of uh, CD8 positive T cells or whether this was simply due to it. Uh, effects on other, my, other uh, immune cells, and so she found that when you inhibit CD8 by uh, depleting CD8 cells from the uh, animal using anti-CD8 antibody-mediated depletion, that the size of tumors s increased. So this indicates that at least part of the effect of inhibiting PCI is through uh, stimulation of CD8-positive T cells. And within my own lab, we've also observed similar effects in other models. So in this same model, uh, Lisa characterized the expression pattern of the T cells that invade the myeloid tumors and found that in um, combination with gemcitabine, the uh, expression of granzyme in CD8 positive T cells was increased. The expression of interferon gamma was also increased. And the expression of uh, CD107 was increased. And these are all uh, markers that indicate uh, active uh, T cells. Um, so in my lab, we're mainly interested in understanding the role of macrophage and signaling in the macrophage in this whole, uh, in the uh, immunosuppressive phenotype. And so we performed studies in vitro to, to uh, determine whether um, FC receptors uh, had any role in promoting the immunosuppressive phenotype in the macrophage. So we found, actually, if you cross-link FC receptors in uh, unstimulated macrophages, it has an effect of inducing an M1-type phenotype. But if you cross-link FC receptors in the presence of an immunosuppressive factor such as IL-4, what we found was a dramatic exaggeration of the M2-type immunosuppressive phenotype. So you get a big increase in arginase CCL2 expression and IL-6 expression. And IL-6 in the context of the tumor is actually immunosuppressive. However, if we treat um, macrophages with PCI, <clears throat> uh, whether they are stimulated with IL-4 or IL-4 plus FC receptor cross-linking, we found that we could switch the phenotype of the macrophage from immunosuppressive towards immunostimulatory. So we saw a reduction in arginase expression in CCL2, IL-10, and we saw an increase in IL-12, uh, INOS, and interferon gamma expression. 
In vivo, when we harvested macrophages from tumors that were treated with PCI, we saw similarly decrease in the level of immunosuppressive factors such as arginase, um, chemotactic factors such as S100, CCL2, and we saw an increase in the immunostimulatory factors, IL-12, and others. So overall, our data suggests that blocking BTK promotes the T cell function by uh, regulating macrophage phenotype. Now, in uh, studies that were published by Lara Susek's lab recently, we've, she found that ibrutinib actually improves overall survival in KPC mice. In these studies, she performed uh, analysis of ibrutinib alone, and you can see in the top that this uh, drug improved the survival of these mice, which generally die, uh, um, all, all the mice would be dead around 23 weeks, but you get an uh, extended uh, survival of quite a few weeks in the animals that were treated just with the drug. But if you treat with gemcitabine and the drug, you also see a uh, very uh, significantly extended uh, half-life. These studies then suggest that BTK inhibitors will be effective uh, and useful to try in clinical trials. And so um, there are now two clinical trials ongoing. The RESOLVE trial, which is uh, the uh, trial of ibrutinib in combination with um, abraxane gemcitabine in uh, first-line treatment of metastatic pancreatic adenocarcinoma that's going on at University of California, San Francisco, and uh, is part of a Stand Up to Cancer Award that was uh, given to Margaret Temper and Lisa Cousins, as well as uh, Liz Jaffe and others. So ACP196 is also in clinical trials uh, for head and neck cancer, and they are uh, advancing their uh, desire to put this into the clinic for pancreatic cancer as well. And in this uh, study, they've combined ACP196 with pembrolizumab. And, uh, and the, I'm not, this, these studies are going on, um, I believe, at MD Anderson. So in my lab, we had been interested in understanding how immune cells enter tumors. And with the idea that if we block trafficking of immune cells into tumors, we could potentially have an effect on tumor outcome by changing the phenotype of the cells in the tumor. So we had published a, several studies, uh, outlined it, as you can see, that had determined that integrin alpha-4, beta-1 on myeloid cells is, is the only integrin that mediates the trafficking of immune cells into tumors. So we've been able to effectively show that antibodies that inhibit alpha-4, beta-1 are very effective at inhibiting tumor growth. Uh, but we had found that a variety of factors could activate integrin alpha-4, beta-1 on circulating immune cells and that um, we asked whether there was a common signaling protein that was responsible for activating the integrin downstream of the various cytokines that are produced in tumors. And so uh, we actually identified that PI3 kinase gamma is that single um, signaling protein that regulates this trafficking pathway. And that launched us into studying PI3 kinase gamma in cancer. So, we had identified an extensive pathway that leads to the activation of integrin, and we had one missing component that uh, recent studies suggested might be BTK. And so we began to look at BTK in, in uh, the, the um, regulation of the uh, inflammation in cancer. And uh, in these studies, you can see that we've compared BTK expression and PI3 kinase expression in a variety of different cell types in the tumor, B cells, macrophages, and then the tumor cells themselves. And BTK and PI3 kinase gamma are both uh, uh, expressed in macrophages, whereas B cells do not express PI3 kinase gamma. They instead express PI3 kinase delta. And tumor cells do not express PI3 kinase gamma, but they express PI3 kinase alpha. So uh, we asked whether PI3 kinase gamma could possibly activate BTK in myeloid cells, and so we've stimulated 
amyloid cells with IL-4, the immunosuppressive factor, and found that it induces the autophosphorylation of BTK, indicative of its activation at early time points. However, we could not uh, detect activation of BTK in P3 kinase gamma null macrophages. So that led us to include that P3 kinase gamma is uh, upstream of BTK and therefore activating BTK. And then we found that in an, a model of uh, cell adhesion that was predictive of the response in vivo that both BTK inhibitors and P3 kinase gamma inhibitors could block the adhesion of myeloid cells to endothelium or the uh, rep replacement substitute uh, VCAM and then could block the trafficking of these cells into tumors. But in, instead, in addition, we had been uh, uncovering a role for PI3 kinase gamma in the regulation of transcription in the macrophage. And in fact, we found that PI3 kinase gamma is required for the M2 phenotype. If we block a PI3 kinase gamma, we block the expression of arginase, TGF-beta, IL-10, CCL-2, and a variety of other M2 factors, and we, um, and we stimulate the expression of IL-12, interferon gamma, and INOS. We found the same thing to be true if we block BTK in macrophages, and that's seen here. If you stimulate macrophages with interferon gamma and LPS, you induce expression of NF-kappa-B-driven molecules such as IL-1, TNF, uh, IL-12, and you suppress expression of arginase, uh, IL-10, TGF-beta. So in fact, PI3 kinase gamma in inhibition and BTK inhibition both strongly suppress, uh, uh, enhance the effect of interferon gamma LPS on macrophages by causing a further suppression of arginase and IL-10 and a stronger stimulation of IL-12. In addition, we find that these inhibitors completely uh, inhibit the M2 phenotype induced by IL-4 on the right by blocking arginase, CCL2, MMP9, and et cetera, and strongly stimulate IL-12 INOS expression. So these studies suggest that if you block PI3 kinase gamma or BTK, that you could change the phenotype of the macrophage in the tumor and affect a, a better outcome uh, of the tumor. So we actually then asked whether we could combine them for a better effect, but we found, in fact, that co combining them had no effect. Uh, um, there was no suggestion that they were on different pathways, but instead they regulate the same pathway. So we then tested PI3 kinase gamma inhibitors in mouse models of pancreatic cancer. And as you see here, the PI3 kinase gamma inhibitors have no effect on the normal pancreas. There's no inflammation, there's no uh, death of the animal. Uh, but instead, in the, when tumor cells are implanted in the mouse, uh, you can see that the um, P3 kinase gamma suppression in the knockout mice con nearly completely inhibits the growth of pancreatic tumors. And even more important, it blocks the uh, metastasis of tumors to peritoneal organs, as you can see by the quantification in the middle and uh, images on the right. So we also found the same uh, beneficial effects of blocking P3 kinase with the inhibitor TG100-115, which really is a tool compound. And you can see uh, if we analyze by tumor weight or by immunofluorescence analysis that uh, we could strongly inhibit the growth of tumors and metastases in these animals. Um, most dramatically, we collaborated with Emilio Hirsch and Franco Novelli at uh, the University of Torino in Italy. And, uh, uh, Emilio Hirsch had developed the PI3 kinase gamma knockout mouse and crossed it with the KRAS uh, the KPC mouse model, and you can see here that inhibiting PI3 kinase gamma in blue causes a significant extension of uh, the average lifespan of animals uh, lacking in, in this KPC model. And in fact, when animals were treated with PI3 kinase gamma inhibitor, you could see a similar effect. And finally, we found that you could change the phenotype of the tumor 
um, in the lower immunohistology panels, that you can see that, the, that there's essentially more normal tissue in the Pietrocanis gamma null uh, uh, animals, and there's uh, very little evidence of cancer. So if we inhibit P3 kinase gamma and BTK in these same tumor models, in orthotopic tumor models, you can see they both, both of the strategies inhibit pancreatic cancer, but they do not combine. And that's uh, seen either with drug or with the knockout. And then the, uh, both strategies, P3 kinase gamma and BTK inhibitors, strongly suppress fibrosis or desmoplasia in pancreatic cancer. So uh, in summary, we found that inhibitors of myeloid cell piatrokinase gamma BTK pathways suppress tumor progression because piatrokinase and BTK both regulate a pathway that leads to the, um, sorry, this slide has the arrows in the wrong way, um, that that the signaling by these proteins stimulates arginase and TGF beta expression, but inhibitors of this pathway then uh, reverse this phenotype, inhibiting arginase, TGF beta IL 10, and inducing IL 12, interferon gamma, and INOS. And we have been able to show in other animal models that these particular molecules are responsible for the increased uh, uh, T cell recruitment and activation and the response to PI3 kinase gamma inhibition. So IPI549 is a new PI3 kinase gamma selective inhibitor being developed by Infinity Pharmaceuticals that will enter clinical trials in January of 2016. So um, in conclusion, uh, Lisa has shown that B cells uh, are uh, regulating um, the suppression of CDA-positive T cells and also the um, uh, regulation of TH2, M2 type macrophages to promote tumor growth, that BTK inhibitors, and we've shown that piatrokinase gamma inhibitors can block uh, these pathways and lead to tumor suppression and um, a better outcome of therapy by stimulating the TH1 type uh, responses in tumors that lead to improved anti-tumor immunity. Um, so um, Lisa's slide, summary slide that I wanted to show you here shows that normally in tumors we have a TH2 type response uh, that leads to tumor progression and um, however the desirable effect is to have CD8 positive T cell responses. The goal of our labs is to find ways to neutralize these TH2 type suppressive pathways, to combine these with cytotoxic and targeted therapies and therapies that are directed towards activating or enhancing the activation of T cells ex vivo. Thank you. So um, my lab uh, at UC UCSD Morris Cancer Center has had uh, a number of uh, wide-ranging collaborations that contribute to this work. Andy Lowy at UCSD and Michael Bouvet at UCSD have played an important role in getting me involved in pancreatic cancer. Franco Novelli and Emilio Hirsch have been uh, wonderful collaborators, are continuing to uh, develop uh, dendritic cell vaccines that they're testing in these piatrokinase gamma null mice. Vito Palabello and David Winkler and Karen McGovern at Infinity are very uh, dedicated to trying to find a, a therapy for pancreatic cancer, and I've worked with Brian Lanuti and David Johnson at ACERTA, and of course uh, with Lisa Cousins and Andy Gunderson at OHSU. But most importantly, I want to highlight the dramatic contributions of Megan Kanita, a project scientist in my lab who's basically uh, done all of the work in our lab on pancreatic cancer. and as identifying the molecular mechanism by which PI3 kinase gamma negatively regulates uh, the M1 phenotype of macrophages. So Lisa's lab, uh, uh, she, her, this work was mainly performed by Tiziana Kodakicchini and Andrew Gunderson in her lab, and she has had a number of collaborations with, uh, continuing with Brian Ruffel, 
uh, who was a former fellow in the lab, Margaret Temperer, and uh, with the Stand Up to Cancer Dream team listed here. So thank you very much.